التي ما قال النبي هو الصحيح نكاح مبارك نكاح مبارك زواج مبارك النكاح من سنتي ما قال النبي هو الصحيح نكاح مبارك Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to this latest episode in the series Marriage and Divorce. We are here to talk about the A to Z of marriage and divorce, and with myself is our Sheikh, Sheikh Haytham al Haddad, who sits on the board of the Islamic Sharia Council in Britain and is also the founder of the website www.islam21c.com. We have recently been talking about the issue of looking at the sister or the sister looking at the brother during the procedure of proposal when it comes to marriage and we would like to continue with this topic before moving on to the issue of the actual engagement assalamu alaikum sheikh wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh my first question is going to be about the wali in terms of the brother is proposing to the sister and he wants to look at the sister but the wali has not given his permission yet is this allowed we did touch on this point. See, there is a hadith. Let me first of all narrate this hadith. The Prophet وسلم, said, if you want to propose to a lady, then you should look to something that encourages you to get married to her. So the narrator of this hadith is Al Mughira bin Shu'bah. So he said, I wanted to proposed to a lady from Al Ansar. So I used to hide in order to look at her and I saw something that encouraged me to go for the proposal. Also there is a hadith in which uh, the Prophet وسلم, said this, this instruction, if a person wants to propose to a sister or to a lady, then he should look at what may encourage him to go ahead for the proposal. One of the companions said, so I went to propose to a lady, and then when I went to her parents, I told them, I told them that I need to look at her. While I had this conversation, the lady, their daughter, heard me saying this, that he is interested to look at her. So she said, listen, she was inside, she said, listen, if the Prophet وسلم, allowed you to do so, then yes. If the Prophet وسلم, did not allow you to do this, then no. SubhanAllah, look at this. How they were careful about men looking at them. And now people are discussing this issue of can we look at women? Is the face of a woman awra or not awra? Anyway, we discussed this in details last time. But this again confirms that looking at the person whom you are proposing to marry is an exception, okay? From the opposite gender, we are talking about a man looking at a woman. Now, see, this in Hadith al mughira he was hiding to look at her, which may mean that he did not take the permission of her wali to look at her. I see. Yeah? However, we need to understand this carefully. We need to contextualize the hadith and we need to look at and explore the deciding factor behind many rulings mentioned in many hadith. And that's why we need to summarize this by mentioning two cases. If you know that it is likely that the wali will accept you, then you can look even without the permission of the wali. Okay. Okay? If he is likely to accept you. If you know that it is unlikely that he will accept your proposal, then no, it is haram. Because what's the point of looking at her? Mm. Now, in between, if you don't know, then don't look without the permission of the wedding. Better to stay on the safe side. Yes. Now, and not only better to stay on the safe side, because other than that, there are a number of hadith in which the Prophet وسلم, prohibited men to visit a lady that her husband 
or her wali is not at home. Okay. Why? Because it creates fitna. Okay? Number of hadith. In fact, there was one narration that Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu came to his wife. His wife at that time was Asma bint Umayz, a very noble lady, a very noble lady. Then Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, when he went to his wife, maybe after a journey, he found that there are two men talking to her. So Abu Bakr al-Siddiq was a bit angry, was not happy with this. So he went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, this is what I have seen. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam prohibited any man to speak or to visit a lady that has no mahram with her. Yes, without his permission. There is one hadith that Umar wanted to speak to the wife of Ali or Ali wants to speak to the wife of Umar. He sent, one of them sent to the other asking his permission to speak to his wife. And then he said, why? He said, yes, we were prohibited from speaking to wives without the permission of their husbands. Okay? Now, some brothers might say, well, we are talking about a wife, a married sister. No, the point is, generally speaking, generally speaking, the non-mahram is not allowed to speak to a lady for no need especially in things related to marriage yeah mm. because this kind of discussion first of all is a private discussion this discussion leads to many other consequences the decision of the wali has to be there in order to finalize the marriage and so on so we want to close the door to fitna we want to close the door to the fitna and as i said the Sharia in general restricted this, regulated this. So it's not just closing the door to fitna, yeah? But generally speaking, the aims of Sharia in this chapter, which is the relationship between both genders, is to restrict that kind of relationship because it is a sensitive kind of relationship. It is not any kind of relationship. So the conclusion is, if you know that he is likely to accept, then go ahead and look. Yeah? Mm. Okay? Even without permission. Now, see, from the other angle, some brothers, they might take this literally, and they might do and look and look again and look again and they chase the sister. No, 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 we are not talking about this. Mm. Yeah? We are talking about, for example, you want to propose to a sister you know or maybe a cousin or someone you heard of. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Then you looked at her. You came across her and you looked at her. Okay? This is what we are talking about. Yeah. It is once, it doesn't involve fitna as we have said before. But if you know, because some brothers take things very literally, if you know that this will antagonize or outrage the wali, then don't do it. Avoid it. Yeah, yeah. In some cultures, in some cultures, this issue of when the wali or when the man feels that there is a man looking at his daughter, he will become outraged. And by the way, by the way, let me mention this to our brothers and sisters. Sometimes the brothers, out of their eagerness and sometimes out of maybe naivety, yeah, out of naivety, they act in a way that pushes the wali away. Mm, so it might influence his decision in the end. It might influence his decision negatively. Yes. And I came across a number of cases like this. And the wali says that, look, this person is immature. Look how he reacts. He does these things behind my back. Talking over the phone, speaking to her sending her emails, etc., etc. Although, I'm sure that some brothers and sisters, they will say, what are you talking about? We see women in the street every time. We see our colleagues in the university, in colleges, etc. What are but you talking about? This is a specific situation about marriage. Excellent, yeah. That is the point. We are not talking about seeing her just casually, one-off or whatever, okay? Mm. With no intention of marriage, with no 
possible consequences on this kind of meeting, on this kind of glance and so on. This is what we are talking about. Mm -hmm. So if you know that he will refuse, don't look. If you know that he is likely to accept, then look. If you don't know, then don't look without his permission. Okay. In terms of the brother looking at the sister, we've started to speak about it. But what if the brother has attended the house, for example, and mm -hmm. the wali is there and he's given the permission for the meeting to happen? Mm -hmm. What's the rulings in terms of the sister looking at the brother? Yeah, same thing, same thing, okay? Of course, the hadith, the hadith, the prophetic statement, the Prophet ﷺ said, انظر إليها. انظر إليها. Look at her. The hadith did not say, you look at him. Mm -hmm. The hadith didn't say this. But we know that in general, women are allowed to look at men if there is no fitna. Mm -hmm. So the sister, she received a proposal from a brother. She needs to look at it. And some scholars said that even this can be taken by qiyas. Okay, so by yeah? comparison. By comparison. It is allowed for the brother to look at the sister while originally speaking it is not allowed, so this is an exemption, then it is likely that the lady is allowed to look at the man who is proposing at her. Okay, I see. So in this situation, let's take it one step further. I have come across a story, I'm not sure how genuine it is in the past, where Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu an, he reported to have looked at the ankle of the sister he was there to propose to. Yeah, this is a story that has been quoted. You know, I don't know. I need to look at the authenticity of this story. However, we need to be careful about single incidents. Yeah? Single isolated incidents cannot be generalized. This is a very important principle in usul al-fiqh. Mm -hmm. So... Okay, now, how do we know that this incident can be generalized or not? Yeah? How can we understand that this incident can be generalized or not? Go and see what the scholar said about it. If the scholar said it is allowed for the person to do this, yeah? And this is a mainstream opinion, then it is a valid opinion that we need to examine further. Okay. But if this hadith is talking about a single incident and we don't know that it can be generalized and there are not many similar hadith to support that action, then we need to stop. Okay, We're going to have to stop you there just, okay. just for a bit. We will continue, inshallah, after the break. Please come and join us where we will continue this discussion about the procedure and the limitations of what can be done in terms of both parties looking at each other. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A friendly message by Dr. Zakir. Where is your paradise? According to Sayyid al Bukhari, volume number 8, Kitabul Adam, chapter number 2, hadith number 2. A man came to Allah's Messenger and asked, O oh Allah's Messenger, who is more entitled to be treated with the best of companionship by me. The Prophet said, your mother. The man asked, who next? The Prophet said, your mother. The man further asked, who next? The Prophet said, your mother. The man asked for the fourth time, who next? The Prophet said, your father. Which means, three-fourths, that is 75% of your companionship goes to your mother. And one-fourth, that is 25% of your companionship goes to your father. In short, the mother gets the gold medal, she gets the silver medal, as well as the bronze medal. The father has to be satisfied with a mere consolation prize. It is specified in Sunan Nasai, Kitabul Jihad, chapter number 6, hadith number 3106. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Paradise lies beneath the feet of your mother. Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Most countries of the world ban bullying. They fight it 
in their schools and universities. A lot of us are being bullied differently every single day. Some come up to us and say, do this, while others say, don't you dare. Some say this is halal, halal, halal. while others say, nope, this is haram. haram. Are you confused? Are you confused? Do you feel lost? Join me in Umdat al-Ahkam, where, with the grace of Allah, we will learn the proper knowledge from the Qur'an and from the Sunnah, which would help stop this kind of bullying. Join Asim al-Hakim in Umdat al-Ahkam, next on Peace TV. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome again, brothers and sisters, to this episode where we are continuing to talk about the limitations during the procedure of the proposal. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum, assalamu wa rahmatullahi. You were just finishing the story before the oh, break. Yes. I was saying that, as you mentioned this, we need to, if we examine what the scholars said about how far you can look, yeah, and to what you can look we will see different opinions. One opinion says that you are not allowed to look. One opinion says that you can look at the face and the hands only. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And one opinion says that you can look at what normally appears from the lady in normal situations, which means in front of her mahram. Now, which opinion shall we go for I normally say, yeah, I usually say that in such circumstances, go for the custom. Mm -hmm. So this is the third opinion that you mentioned? It depends. Okay. It depends. Okay. Subhanallah, the variety of opinions in fiqh, yeah, allows us in number of circumstances, not in all circumstances, in certain circumstances, to take the opinion that fits that culture, provided that this opinion is an opinion that is based on Quran and Sunnah. Okay? So, if there are different opinions, then go for the custom. Okay, so let's take, for example, where we are from, the UK. We have many different cultures living in the same place. And if someone from one culture proposes to someone from another culture, yes, and in terms excellent. of compatibility, they're okay, it's yeah. fine. This is a very good practical scenario. Mm. This is a, a very genuine case, okay? In this case, we say go for the opinion what the family allows you, mm. or what the sister allows you. Even if the brother had a different opinion? Yeah, <laughs> because see, you cannot say, and by the way, some brothers are so naive, yeah? They go and they said, well, I need to see the hair. So if they said, no, you are not allowed to look at it. And he said, no, the Prophet wasallam said, look at what encourages you to get married to her. They will say, well, we have our interpretation. No, you must do it. They will say, okay, get lost. Is that true or not? True, very true. Yeah. Now, if they say to him, get lost, what is he going to do? He will get lost. <laughs> That's it, he's lost that. <laughs> he lost that. So, my dear brothers, you need to be wise. You cannot force your opinion on others, especially in matters related to marriage and engagement. Yes. Mm -hmm. What about these days we have all this new technology, for example, Skype. Is there a difference between looking at the sister face to face or looking over the internet, for example, through Skype? Yeah, this is, again, a uh, real scenario. For example, in the UK, there are many brothers who want to propose to sisters from abroad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, extended family or something like this. And they might say, well, do I need to travel all the way? From the UK to Pakistan or, or from the UK to an African country or in order just to look at her, mm -hmm. I'll see her over Skype. Or she might send me her picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah to take a photo and, or WhatsApp picture or something like this. See, in all these contemporary methods to make life easy, they can be used. 
However, the predicament or the worry is that the misuse mm. of this technology. Okay? This is the problem. For example, you can look at her picture. But after that, what are you going to do with the picture? Mm. Yeah? And the family, do they have confidence that this person is going to get rid of the picture, delete it, and not undelete it later? Mm. Okay? This is the issue. But technically speaking, you can. Now, there is another issue here, which is, are you sure that this picture is the actual picture? Mm -hmm. Is the actual photo of this sister? Sometimes the reality might be different from the picture. Yeah? yeah? So what to do in this case? Mm. So, as I said, technically it is allowed, but these issues have to be taken into consideration. Now, see, this, as we mentioned this, why doesn't the person send someone to look at this sister on his behalf, yeah? There was an incident when the Prophet Sallallahu sent a lady to look at a girl, either him Sallallahu Alaihi wants to propose to her or another person wants to propose to her. Mm -hmm. And look at this, it is quite interesting. He said, go look at her and smell her body. Okay. Yeah? And look at Arqubayha, look at her uncle. Yeah? Why is this? Does she look after herself or not? Is she clean, decent, etc.? Now, the Prophet ﷺ didn't do this himself. Or he did not allow this, okay, to be done by the Atma. No, he sent a lady, Umm Salama, in fact, in one narration, to do this, to examine. That can be done. Yeah, and uh, in some customs, normally men send their mothers or sisters or married sisters in particular, go and look at her. Yeah, look at how she conducts herself. Is she clean, tidy, not tidy? Is she cheerful, not cheerful, smiley, not smiley? How she acts with others and so on. Yeah. I have a question. If the mother or sister describe the sister in question to the brother, mm -hmm. so if they describe the potential wife to the brother, yeah. can he accept or continue with the procedure without wanting to see her? This can happen. This can happen, as you said. Although it might be rare, but it can happen. See, I think the answer for this question is dependent on the ruling on looking at her, mm. okay? Now, as we said that some scholars said that looking at her is wajib. This might be seen as an odd opinion, but the vast majority of scholars said that looking at her is either recommended or permissible, mm -hmm. okay? Again, there is an odd opinion that says is haram, mm -hmm. which is an odd opinion. So there are two odd opinions. now. Four opinions. One opinion says it is haram to look at her. On the other hand, one opinion says it is wajib to look at her. Mm. Okay? And then in between, there is an opinion that says sunnah, recommended, or another opinion that says is what? Is halal. Mm. So most of the scholars go for these two opinions, that it is either sunnah or is halal. One final question before we end this episode. Can a brother appoint another brother to go and look on his behalf? Yeah, this is... <laughs> yeah, then the other brother, he will be interested in that lady. He will go, yeah, or he will pretend that he is the man. Mm. Yeah, if you appoint me, I will go, and then I will say, I am so and so, I want to propose. Or he will say, I am coming to look at your daughter on behalf of this brother, and then later on he will like her, and then he will go ahead for her. No, 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 this is not allowed. This is not allowed. Even it is not allowed for him to send his father, yeah? yeah? And by the way, this is a common mistake, mm -hmm. that some people go to look at the sister with their parents. 
both parents go with your mother but don't go with your father or with your other male relatives jazakallah khair sheikh unfortunately time is up so we need to end it here for now but please do join us again in the next episode where i still have a few more questions about this issue of the limitations when it comes to both parties being face to face in the procedure of the engagement assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh النكاح مبارك مبارك زواج